Chest to the ground. Again, go. Again, go. Now, go, now. Up, up. One more, go. Go. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here. I got my Jiu Jitsu shirt on. Alec is here. White He's shirt. got his super clean, super fresh white shirt on. Bad news is it's gonna have blood on it after this workout. <laughs> JK, maybe? We are going to do chest and back training, just like Arnold used to. Why are we pairing chest and back? No particular reason, but sometimes in some program designs over the week, you'll be training chest and back in the same session. Here's a cool way to do it. We have four exercises lined up, four or five. What we're gonna do first, is pull-ups of some kind. We'll figure out the grip width and the grip structure in a second. If the reps drop below a certain amount, we might go to pull-downs or assisted pull-ups to boost that volume, because we're gonna be doing oh, four or five sets of each movement. So if the reps drop below about five, not optimally hypertrophic anymore, we're gonna replace it with an exercise that allows us to get in more volume at those quality rep ranges. After that, we're gonna be doing some bent over rows. We'll make a decision on if it's gonna be Smith machine bent over rows or barbell rows. It's gonna be compound hardcore either way. After that, we're done with back. We're gonna be moving over into chest where we're gonna do incline barbell press very likely. And then we're going to be doing some real fun stuff. Ha ha, ha ha type of fun mm -hmm. on a chest press machine. That means some drop setting, all that kind of cool stuff. Just four exercises, four or five, depending on how you count it roughly four or five sets of each one. That gives us about 16 to 20 sets total in a workout, which is a really pretty meaty session at yes. the end of the day and really good for hitting the chest and back. And some of you might be like, yeah, but that's not a ton of volume for either chest or back. For a week, it's not. So if you do this kind of workout, you wanna do it at least twice a week, maybe even three times a week, just varying the movements and rep ranges, workout to workout to workout, and you'll have such a big chest and back hmm. that people will say you're that weird big chest and back guy. Hmm. Let's get to the first exercise. Nice, easy weight here, folks. We're just warming up, warming up the nervous system for the technique component, for the output component, and also getting the muscles physically warm so we're ready to train both high output and at a low injury risk. So typically when we warm up, we're gonna do, in most cases, at least one pretty light set of 10 or so, and at least one more set of like four or five relatively heavy. And then we can go and do one or two reps here on the actual pull-ups to really get used to the true load. We don't want to rush our warm-ups. You can rush a lot of things in life. I would know, I've rushed so much, I have nothing to show for anything. Guys, I am morally bankrupt from rushing. Yeah. Also being Russian, I guess, same thing. But in any case, you want to take your time with warm-ups. Even if you have a short time, make sure your warm-ups are quality. If you want to get hurt, rush your warm-ups. It's the only thing I can say. Folks, Alec is going to start. He is going to do only full range of motion pull-ups, which means two things. One, his head has to clear the bar at the top, but also he has to get a full dead hang at the bottom. He is not gonna be doing any swinging, any crazy psycho movements, just high quality work. This is simulating a workout that you would do at the end of a mesocycle, so all sets are gonna be taken very close to concentric failure. As far as rep counting, I will only count the reps that are good and of high quality. So, you ready to do high quality reps? I'm ready to do it. Boom, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Nice and easy, no pressure. And down, one, beautiful. Two, control the descent, excellent, and up. Four, five, beautiful work. Six, Alec, these are some of the best pull-ups I've ever seen, let's go. Seven, all the way down, go. Eight, keep going. I want one more at least. Move, move, move. Nine, one more. Dude, you're the fucking man. Oh, fuck this you guy. showed up for oh. a reason. Go, 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 go. Slow, slow. Oh. And that's it. Good job. Yeah. Good work. Shit, I would have bailed on the. the for eight, sure. Maybe the seven. For seven. sure. Maybe even the six. Yeah. No, I'll give you six. Seven. <laughs> I'll give you seven. Control. Good. At least one more. Big moves. Up, up, up. Good, slow. Rest for a second. Go. Up, up, 
up, up, up, slow. Control, 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 control. Beautiful, that's it, good job. Excellent work, excellent work. That is it, folks. That's it for pull-ups. Now we move on to our second back exercise, which is the barbell bent over row. All right, folks, Alex done pull-ups, four sets of roughly five to 10 reps. Now he's gonna be doing barbell bent over rows. He's a super tall guy, he's like 6'3". So some people would say this is an awkward movement. Nothing awkward about it, it's just the range of motion is huge, which means the stimulus is awesome. Yes, the weight might be humbling if you're taller, but you're not in here to try to impress yourself with how much weight you're doing for a teeny tiny range of motion. If you wanna be like me with my little alligator arms, I can bent row 315 for reps, who cares? The purpose is to get a big back, which means whatever the load corresponds with the number of reps you want, that's the one you use, plain and simple. Let's get to work. And stop right there, keep your chest up, begin to row. Zero momentum, one. You don't have to stop at the top, just gentle touch, two. Perfect, three, four. Back position looks really good. Five. Excellent, we're training the whole back. Lats, rhomboids, erectors, traps, rear delts even. Good, four more, big chest. 16, no swinging. 17, touch that tummy. 18, come on, almost there. 19, chest up. Come on, let's go. 20, beautiful. Good stuff, very good. Take, <laughs> take a break, take a drink, and then we start training chest. So a question we'll probably get about this workout is why didn't we stagger the chest and back movements? Why not let the chest recover while the back is being hit and vice versa? So why not do back, chest, back, chest, or the other way around, chest, back, chest, back? Why are we doing back first, all of it, and then chest, all of it? Doesn't that deprioritize chest? It does. But it allows us to smash our back the most when the systemic fatigue is the lowest. If you put one of the back movements later, your systemic fatigue is higher, like you're just tired overall, and you've done a bunch of chest and back, and now you're doing back, can you get a good quality workout? Yes, but to the local muscle, the local fatigue probably has something to do with hypertrophy. Systemic fatigue doesn't. So we're maximizing local fatigue in the back by doing it in the first two movements, which probably gives us a slightly better hypertrophy result. If you were training for strength, it's probably not the case. Staggering movements would be better, but for pure hypertrophy, it might be better to squeeze them in together and then move on to the next muscle group. So keeping your muscle groups contiguous. So back, back, chest, chest, versus splitting them up like that. Now, you may say, okay, but if we do this kind of workout, how the hell are we gonna get a big chest? We're always training it tired. Good, excellent critique. But you're not gonna do one of these a week. You may do two or three of them. Two or three chest and back days means one of the days you do back first, like today we're doing, back first, then chest. Another day later in the week, like on a Monday and then a Wednesday, and the Wednesday, you might do chest first and then back second. Both of them get a great workout, but chest slightly better. So that if you do that twice a week, let's say, Monday, Thursday, then you have a chest back and a back chest. And together, both muscle groups get both an ability to recover because they're not always being smashed and an ability to be put first on the front burner and get the optimal stimulus. So over the week, it all fixes itself. Part two of the workout begins here with the incline barbell press for hypertrophy. We're gonna be targeting sets in the, oh, 10 to 15 rep range on a first set and then letting fatigue degrade us as we go. Let's get it started. Good, keep going. Up, oh, Alec, you're doing great, keep it up. Good, breathe out only at the top. Breathe out, good. Loving the control, these are excellent, keep going. Again, good, don't let that bar slow down on you on the way up. Speed, excellent, again. Mm. Let's end on a high note. Up! Yes, oh. one more, let's go. Move, go, go, go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good job, very good job. Get a drink, relax, and then we begin push up hell. All right, folks, we we're gonna do machine chest press, but during the conversation during training when he wasn't vomiting blood, Alec told me that he gets his best stimulus to fatigue ratio for chest, just a few exercises, and a push-up, especially with a deficit, is one of them. So, how are we gonna be hypocrites and ignore our own shit? 
high SFR exercises, that's what we want. So Alec is gonna be suffering deficit push-ups. We're gonna do, oh, what's gonna end up being around four sets, but we got a few intensity techniques planned. You might have seen them in some of our other videos before. Let's find out who stays alive. Folks, we have three rules when we do push-ups. Rule number one, every single repetition, the chest gently touches the ground. Rule number two is every single repetition, the elbows come fully locked out at the top every single time. Rule number three, your dick doesn't touch the ground. You're not doing dick push-ups, we're doing push-up push-ups. So you're gonna keep your butt actually slightly elevated, which most people would say to you that that's bad push-up technique. But most people are fucking wrong. Up, one, good. Up, two. Up, 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 up. Ah, more, you got more. Get up. Rest, don't go anywhere. Again, go. Push. Oh, fuck. That's it, that's failure, good stuff. Up, nine. Up, up, up. Rest, rest for a sec. One, go. Move, good. One, go. Go. <laughs> Down on your knees. Go from your knees. Excellent. 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 Keep going. Keep going. Uh, We're gonna milk your chest for every fucking uh, thing that it has. Uh, go again. Up. Uh, again. Go. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, you got time to joke? Motherfucker, you're barely trying. Uh, go. Up. Uh, again. Chest to the ground. Uh, again. Go. Uh, Again, go, now, go, now. Up, up. One more, go. Go. Again, go. Up, 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 up. That's it, beautiful. Oh, fuck. What the fuck was that? Thank you, sir. Good job. Thanks, buddy. That's it. That's fine. Folks. Thanks for tuning in. Hard training's tough. You don't always have to train like this because in your first weeks of the mesocycle of your workout plan that lasts one or two months, go a little easier. Leave a few reps in the tank, don't do as many sets, but then every single session, pretty much every single week, you move, 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 add a rep here and there, add five pounds here and there. If you're not getting good pumps, if you're not getting too sore, add a set here and there. And after about, oh, four to six to eight weeks, you're gonna be doing shit like this and you're gonna be barely surviving. The week after this, you do a deload week, recover all that fatigue, and you proceed to start slow and easy and work back up again next time. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys later.